Welcome. This is Adam Rafferty, and in this series of instructional videos, I'm going to show you how I play my solo guitar arrangement of the tune Misty by Errol Garner. I've got some very important notes that I'm going to share with you. Please watch this video before you dive in to the actual hands-on guitar stuff. Lots of important stuff is about to come. Okay. Misty was written by the jazz pianist and composer, Errol Garner, and uh, we're going to play it in the key of D rather than E flat. I believe the original was in E flat, and most of the time one plays it in E flat if you're playing with a band. We're going to do key of D because we have a lot more open strings. Standard tuning. It's a jazz standard, and the form is an A section, an A section, then a B section, which we will call the bridge, and an A section. Okay, so before you start learning where to put your fingers, you must have a sense of the song itself because your knowledge of the melody and your knowledge of the harmony is going to be your backbone through which you'll be able to differentiate what's essential to the song versus what's particular to my arrangement. Many students uh, get a little hung up, understandably so, because my arrangements are pretty tricky. And I don't expect that everybody can do all the little crazy things that I can do, but that should not prevent you from playing the song. You can always simplify. You can always leave things out. Most important is that you keep the thread of the melody with a groove and do your best to fit something under that. So first off, you must have a sense of the song, the melody, the harmony, and the bass. Later on, I'm going to show you the walking bass line that I do. So in the help file, I've included a couple YouTube video links that I consider essential watching. The Ella Fitzgerald version, so you can just hear the song sung. And then the Sarah Vaughan version, which is awesome, again, to just hear the absolute song with the words. Then Errol Garner's version, because he was the composer. And then the version that I play is sort of based off this Hammond B3 Harlem groove. And there's a great recording of Richard Groove Holmes doing this on Hammond B3. And that's sort of the version that, that what I'm going to show you. Okay? Yes. Ah, a couple of important things. When you see notes on paper, you know, very often we think we have to hit everything with full force and full... I want to say confidence, a lot of the notes, the way I play them, are very brushy and very light. Kind of like if you're playing a groove on the African drum, like, like what I teach here on Study with Adam, or groovy stuff on the guitar, not every note has the weight of a full, uh, fully deeply plucked note. So it's very important for these walking bass lines and passing things to stay very light with your touch until you feel where it's safe to push a little bit harder. And lastly, when I play it, I do a, a kind of a jazz guitar type solo over uh, some A sections in the second chorus. What I'm going to do is just play it slowly. I'm going to include it in the tabs. So if you're a player that feels like you can handle that or you want to get some ideas, great, dive into it. But that is not essential at all to playing this arrangement. You can actually leave that whole solo out and just play another bridge and play it to the end because I don't want you getting hung up there. Just stay with the song. It's just that I do it, and I'm sure some of you are curious, so I'll show you what I do, but it is optional. Okay. Uh, lastly, my last intro note here is if you know the melody 
and you can play it, that's your backbone. That's the thing you can always come back to. So please check out the melody and check out the harmony and get the song in your ears before you get started here. Okay, so check that out. Download the help file. Check out those videos. And let's get started with some hands-on work with Misty. All right. Alrighty, so this is the first hands-on lesson of Misty, but we're going to dive right into the walking bass line because this is something that needs to be looked at a little bit separately from the song itself. As I said in the intro, your job is to familiarize yourself with the vocal melody or the instrumental, the actual melody of the song, Let's get right into the bass line. And in the help file, you're going to see the chord changes that this fits on. So right now, if you're not sure what chords this fits on, don't, don't worry about that. Okay. A one, two, ready, and. Let's stop there. We're outlining a D, a D major 7. And you'll notice that I use the open A as a shift point instead of playing notes there. I go boom. Don't worry about which fingers you use yet. Open, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret. Open. Those are the first two bars. One, two, ready, and. Okay, moving ahead, it's, now we're gonna look at bars three and four. Okay, so the chords we're outlining are D major 7. Okay. Like I said, the, all the chords will be written out in the help file in case I forget to say them. Because I just want to have you concentrate on playing the line. Okay, let's play that much again. One, two, ready, and. Okay, now let's let's go ahead. We're on the G major. So let's look at that. Three, third fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. Then open D. Now watch. Let's do it again from the G major. G minor. Okay. Now let's do bar nine of the bass line. Of the bass line and of the first A section, not of the arrangement. Okay. We're going to be on F sharp minor. Next. One more time. Again, we're just getting, we're just walking through, getting a feel for the bass line. I want you to experiment with just, just playing this bass line and we're going to do it in time, 
but to just separate it, and this may be the first time that you're trying a walking bass line. It's going to get a little bit more complicated when we add all the parts to it. So that's why it's good, rather than work on everything all at once, let's just get a, get a feel. Get a feel in your thumb for the bass line. Get a feel, the sense of the melodies. Okay. Then we're at bar 11 of the bass line, not of the arrangement. It's going to do some. It's going to do uh, some chordal stuff where it breaks out of being a walking bass line. Let's do this whole thing. I'm going to show you the tabs on the screen, and let's just play it. Uh, let's play through it twice, okay? One, two, go, check it. Two, one, two, ready, and. Don't play too hard with your thumb, nice and light. about what's coming here because we're going to have the bam bam we're going to have some chordal stuff okay now i know i said we we're going to play through it twice but i'm cutting myself short because there's a variation on the bass line that you're going to do the second time and this is just enough of a twist to give the listener something fresh for their ears that we're going to we're going to also put this behind the melody so we're going to start a little bit different it's just the first two bars are different. Instead of, instead of that, we're going to do a scale coming down. Watch what we're going to do. And that's bam, bam, bam. Okay. And then it's going to be the same throughout all of that. So uh, it's going to be the same throughout the rest of the A section. That's what I'm showing you the bass line to. One more time. Let's look at this new variation. A one, and two, ready, and. And then we're going to keep going. Going. That's it. I'm not really grooving real hard. I'm just kind of trying to show you how I do it. Okay, and then we're going to break out of the walking line. The bridge section has a little bit of this, but not much. This is the, this is the main idea for the line. So just, you don't have to get this perfect before you start the arrangement. Just play through it a couple times and start thinking, wow, we're going to be having this underneath the melody. Okay. All righty. Let's go on to the next lesson. Alrighty. Well, now we've taken a quick look at what we're going to have for the bass line. So it's good to just get familiar with that. And in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you the, the rhythm that I call the Harlem Hammond B3 organ figure. And so we're going to learn that rhythm and we're going to practice that a little bit. And I'll show you the first four bars of the A section. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to sing you the rhythm first. Uh, it's going to change throughout the piece. We're going to use it with different 
chords. But the rhythm is sort of a thread. It's a theme that keeps coming back in this arrangement. Okay, so here it is. One, a two, a one, two, ready, and. Ba, o, ba, ba, a, ba. Bang, bang, ba, ba, ba. And then we're in the tune. One more time. A one, two, ready, and shoot. Bop, ba. Bop, a, ba. Bop, ba, 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 ba. Okay. So the first time that we do it, and when we used to play it in the clubs, we would just start the tune like this. There was no intro. So that's that's kind of why I'm going to show you my intro as the last video. The song intro is optional. You can just start right on this figure. Okay, so let's let's look at which chords we're going to do. First one. Go to the ninth fret and bar, and you're gonna try to smush your second finger on the top two strings, and bar that. That's sort of like a, how can I say? This is kind of a, a D six nine chord with D in the melody and F sharp in the bass. Okay, then you're gonna go to the Eighth fret and bar, and and only play the high E string at the tenth fret. Sort of an F sus chord. Now E minor seven. That's the one where you're gonna go. And then watch what I do. A sus. Okay, so these might be some new chord shapes for you. If any of these chord shapes is really uncomfortable, and remember, I've got low action on these strings. It's very easy for me to play chords up here. So if any of these is uncomfortable, you can always play like a D octave. main thing is that you nail that rhythm. Okay, now the way that I play this, as you can see, I do it with a fleshy thumb, no thumb pick. You could do it with a pick. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of things that are easier if you use a thumb pick or a flat pick. But this, I get this kind of West Montgomery sound where the top string rings very clearly. So in this song, I don't use any thumb pick. I'm going to play this for you slow. If you want to try to play it along with the video, we can, we can practice it together a couple times. Okay, so here we go. One, two, 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 one, two, ready, and shoot. Boom, boom, boom. And then we're, in, we're into the tune from there. Okay, let's do it again, ready? One, tick, two, tick, one, two, ready, and boom, boom, shaboom, boom, 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 and then we're in the tune. One more time. One, tick, two, tick, one, two, ready, and. Okay, let's look now at the first four bars of the tune. As you can see, you saw me play the first two melody notes a couple times. This is um, this will really help you get your right hand accurately placed and get the groove right. I do the first um, with a back strike. That's an A note here and I'm muting behind here, so I don't hit any other strings. Very often, I'll even do not just a back strike, but all of my right hand fingers, so I get so I get a really ring, okay? And then I do a, a pull off. See that? And I'm, my first finger is barring the top three strings. 
okay? So that I'm ready to then play the rest of the phrase. Now, the way I like to do it on the right hand, for some reason it's comfortable like this. You'll have to experiment. We, we've got to play these three strings. For some reason, I, I gravitate towards doing this with my middle and ring finger, but that's entirely up to you. You can, you can use one finger, meaning with your thumb. You can use P-I-M. Okay. Now, a critical thing for me to be accurate is that I land on the D string right when I do the pull-off. So watch. See how I'm landing at the same time that I'm pulling off? Then these fingers are in the right position. See that? Then I'm right in position for that. So now let's look at that. I'm holding that and I'm coming down here. I'm using second finger, third finger, fourth finger, and then open. Okay. Now you don't have to play these bass notes hard. And another thing that you may want to experiment with, this is very personal and I'm still finding ways to make this easier. Sometimes, even if I'm just playing my thumb, I curl my index finger in a little bit because it feels like I'm holding a flat pick, which is a, a feeling that I'm very used to from having done it for so many years. You don't need to have a separate thumb that's doing the, the work all by itself. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you to investigate for yourself what's the most comfortable way for you to do it. Okay. Now what I do when I come up to the A minor, as you saw in the bass line, I'm doing, I'm playing these notes here. And there's a basic reason. I can be a little bit more sloppy with the right hand because it's the low E string, and I get a slightly fatter sound on the bass. Now, with the melody, I'm doing a three against two rhythm, which is gonna happen quite a bit here in this arrangement. I'm going one, two, 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 bang, bang, bang. See how I did that? One, two, three. Now, I can't always get it as clearly as I'd like, but I do my best. And I've got my ring finger planted on the high E string for security. You can do the same thing here. I kind of liked how it felt up here. Okay. Moving ahead. I hammer on to the second finger there because I'm going to need the first finger on the next chord. Okay. I play two A's in the bass. Now watch. So when I go up to this chord, this A minor, I'm playing a low, low E. Okay. And then if you look at the tabs on the screen, you'll see there's a low E, an A string, and then a D string. So if you play lightly enough with your thumb, you can do rest strokes where you're landing. But like I said, get a fat sound with your thumb. Don't play too hard. Okay. And I'm I'm brushing here so that I just get the melody and a few of the chord tones. Now this is rather tricky here what I'm going to do. Uh, you'll have to practice this slowly. Watch this. Probably don't see this G on your screen yet because that's the next measure. So I'm doing 
So the A is in the bass, then. Now I want you to know that a lot of this, when I play it, it feels under my fingers sometimes like I'm barely getting it. You know, I'm just grazing the notes, barely getting them, but I stay in the flow and I try to make the melody come out. So what you're imagining probably as me playing all of these notes with force and confidence is probably not the case. I'm letting notes get brushed. I'm letting notes be quiet. I'm trying to find my way through and stay loose and groove as I play. So it's a lot, it's a lot more um, delicate than one would imagine. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the first four bars for you, okay, with the Harlem shout figure. A one, two, a one, two, ready, and... so on and so forth into the next ones. Uh, you might have heard that I also did a lot of, a little bit of percussion here. So. That's up to you. If you want to, if you're feeling inspired and if you're feeling the spirit and you want to beat on your guitar a little bit, you can do that there. Alrighty, let's go on to the next lesson. All right, welcome back. Let's look at bars five through eight of Misty. This is where we hit the G major seven chord change. Okay, so in the last video, we were, we were left off with an open B string, the melody, and that actually anticipates. It comes just a little bit before the downbeat of the, the G bass note. So we were left at Okay. Now let me show you what happens here. It's pretty this is actually not so hard. The B is ringing and we do Well, I just stopped the B from ringing and I shouldn't have. Now I believe I play that note there instead of an open and then we're going to go. Okay. Let's look at that one more time. One, starting on the B. One, and two, a three, four. So let's look a little bit at that move. Let, let, let's check this out because there's a, a little bit of a syncopation between the bass and the melody. So we're hammering and we're landing on the F sharp. And then we move this, these two notes up and we pluck the melody note just a little bit, I believe I pluck it a little bit before the, the G. See that? Okay. Now watch. Open A string in the bass and we're going to do a hinge bar on the fifth fret. Okay, of course that, that probably doesn't sound like anything when it's totally out of time. I'm going to play this for you in time, slowly, starting on the, in, on the B melody note, ready? One, two, ready, and...
Now, throughout a lot of this, as I play it, I have to very often uh, figure out which right hand finger feels best, which keeps my hand loose, uh, which makes things feel agile. So there's no science to this, unfortunately. This is what you're seeing me do is a custom fit for my bizarre sort of technique, what my technique is turned into. So you will have to slowly and gently discover fingerings and little tweaks that will make this comfortable. The only rule is it should feel good and keep that melody and groove going. Play light. Okay, so here we go, one more time. On the an anticipated B. On that one. One, two, ready, and. If you're looking in the right-hand camera, what you might sometimes see, if, for example, sometimes I come out into this kind of a position, which I don't, I'm not particularly proud of. Uh, most guitar teachers would scream at me, but when I play with the point of my thumb, it's kind of easy to get a, a point on the sound. It's almost like my thumb is pointing in. But then when I have to play chords, if I'm out here for too long, bending my wrist, it starts to not feel good. So I try to come back in to a, a position like this and then play more with the side of my thumb. It depends on the passage. So by merely looking at my right hand, you won't know what I'm thinking. And it doesn't always work, what, what I do. You know, I'm, I'm changing it frequently, looking for the best solution. Um, so sometimes you're going to see me changing position and what feels good to you might be entirely different than what feels good to me. I know I'm, I'm harping on this, but I'm a guy that's watched a lot of videos and tried to copy a lot of other people's techniques only to find that I still have to come back and get the sense of what is comfortable and groovy for me. Okay, let's play it from the... Harlem shout through the first eight bars, okay? Nice and slow. One, two, one, two, ready, and. That's where we're up to so far. Okay. This is really like a two-part invention. You've got to have the melody clear, and you've got to have that sense of the bass line pretty clear. We're just filling in little stuff in the middle where it's comfortable for our left hands to grab. All righty. Let's go on to the next video. Alrighty, welcome back. Let's look at bars 9 through 12 of the A section. Okay, so the last video left us off at an F sharp minor, where we're barring on the second fret, and we're gonna, uh, here's what we're gonna do. Bar, bass line, goes to the A. Now watch this. This is a, you're going to bar the third fret, fourth finger, third finger. So it's, it's kind of a, a passing, how can I explain this? The main idea is, it's, the main idea is C7 to B minor, but we want to add 
a little bit of counterpoint. So we're kind of playing a chord and a bass note that don't exactly hook up, but it gives us this nice feeling of independent parts. Can't understand, can't understand. That's the lyric there. I get misty. Okay, now watch what we're going to do. Let me explain that. We're having lots of three against four rhythms. So it's the three against four rhythm that we're, we're constantly seeing is, watch this, let's just isolate the right hand. And I'm coming out into this funny hand position that I was telling you about because I can, I can thump on the bass a little bit easier, so watch. One, one, two, three, four. So that's okay. Bang, 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 bang. So you might need to isolate. Now I'm playing very lightly as I do this. It's easier for me to do than if I do it like that. I'm playing a little bit syncopated ar around that rhythm. Bang, bat, to bang, 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 bang. Okay, so now let's do these four bars nice and slow. Okay. One, tick, two, tick, two, one, two, ready, and. Okay, so did you see that left hand fingering? That's what I do. Okay. One more time. This, these four bars, bars nine through twelve. One, two, ready, and. to deal with that chord in the next video. Another thing that I'd like to add about the technique, because my, I do some things that look kind of nutty with my right hand. When you see me almost waving my right hand like this, like there, for instance, instead of being close by, see I'm doing it again there? You see how it's coming out and doing this? There's a couple of reasons for that. One, there's going to be a little bit of a backbeat on two and four. Where there's a little bit of a slap, but it's also my way to sort of bring my hand out and let it flop around a little bit to try to loosen it up after, after doing very precise things. Because see, I wouldn't get the right sound if I just went like a classical guitar player. If I was only playing the bass notes, I wouldn't get the right feel. Now, I'm not saying you need to come way out and slap, but what I'm attempting to do, as I said, is to just let my hand flop around a little bit and shake out any uh, stiffness that I had been holding from a previous fingering. Again, that's my little bit of guitar weirdness. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will play it from the very beginning of what we've done up until this point. 
I'm going to try to go nice and slow so that you can see everything in slow motion. Here we go. One, two, on one, two, ready, and. And that leaves us at the next video. So go on to the next video. All right. All righty, welcome back. We are now at the last four bars of the first A section, bars 13 through 16. And I'd like to say, you know, we're, by no means are we done with the arrangement, but if you've started to process what's going on at this point in the tune, this is a lot of the arrangement. This is a, 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 major, a major part of it. So you're, you're well on your way to learning Misty. Okay. So uh, let's look at the last four bars. We have, uh, we were left off here, and we're gonna play a C9 sharp 11. Looks like I'm barring the whole second fret, but I'm really playing, and I'm mainly just holding this bar to play the, rather jazzy change. Then we're gonna have a straight up B7. And now watch, we're going to have the Harlem Shout figure. Just like we had it before. Okay, so on this C9 that I showed you, you're going to, you're going to have to fill it up a little bit with rhythm because we're just playing that one change. And you're going to have to fill that one up with rhythm. I will demonstrate. So it's going to kind of be like one, and two, and ready, and. So let's do everything we've done up now until this point, because after this is going to come A section number two. Here we go from, from the Harlem organ shout. Here we go. One, two, two, two one, two, ready, and shaboom. Here's the new thing. And then we're in the second, we're going to be in the second A section. All righty, let's go on to the next video. All righty, we are back and First, I'd like to congratulate you on getting this far, getting through the first A section of Misty with the walking bass line. It's probably a lot of new information for you. 
In this video, I'm going to show you a small variation that I do at the beginning of the second A section to just add a little bit of variation. And it's not hard to do. This first thing I'm going to show you, you can decide whether or not you want to do this. If it's too much to remember for you at this time, you can, you can just leave this out and maybe come back to it at a later point. Um, this is to give a little variation to the bass line sound that we originally had with, with a Okay. So as you'll recall, in the last video, we were left at our pull-off to start another melody. And in this one, you're going to do... You're going to do your pull-off, and then you're going to go to your second finger instead of the chord. You're going to play second finger on the C sharp, and now watch. Now, like I said, if this is, I'm pretty good with playing my pinky. If that's hard for you, maybe you could even do it like this. But remember, I've, I've trained this because I studied classical guitar. So if that is impossible for you, let's see what else you could do. Uh, there might be a way you could do it with another finger. And then after that, again, that's our three against four rhythm. One, two, three, four, one. One more time. Starting, I'm going to start playing on beat two. One, two. Okay. So now these are just the first two bars. I'm going to play these again for you nice and slow. One, two, one, two, ready, and change. We're home free. Okay. One more time. And then we're home free. Right? Okay. So that's the first different thing about this. A section. The next different thing is going to be the chord changes we use to end it. Because we're going to the bridge and instead of leaving a question mark on the A sus like we did because we were coming back to D, originally we did that leads us back into we're going to do some different changes, okay? So let's take it from here. Just, just dive in and follow. This is all the same. All the same. And now instead of going to that C7 chord like we did, we're going to do a D6 chord. Watch this. Show you what that is here. Again, I've got hands, I've got a left hand that can grab this. I'm going to try to think of an easier way for you to do it. You could grab an octave here. See, so I'm just grabbing two notes. Or you could grab. Main thing is that melody right there. So I, I play this. And I try to mute all, I try to mute the two outer strings. 
and then G minor 6. I like that minor 6 sound. Now watch this, E minor. Then you're going to go up to the 10th fret. Looks kind of like a G minor, but it's actually, I'm thinking, E flat major 7. So it's like a bum, bum. And then you're going to end on that, which is kind of like a D chord. Even though they're, the bass notes are different, what I'm thinking is bum, 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 bum. E minor to E flat major to D. And if this sounds like Chinese for to you, just play what I'm showing you and then look at the changes in the help file and let it settle over the next couple weeks. Okay, let me do this in slow motion for you so you get to see the music in real life. One, two, ready, and... And then we're off into the bridge. Okay. One more time. From the A7. One, two, ready, and. Okay. Now, when I play that, I let a little bit of the fleshy part of my index finger touch the high E string so it mutes it, and then I try to either use my thumb or something to barely touch this. So I can be a slob over here and str strum however I want, and we don't hear any of the outer E strings. Okay, so now the next uh, video, we're going to go on and start learning the bridge. All right.